Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Boost! Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available today. Well, not really, maybe next year. The album, Dad, shimmy, shimmy, AF. It's my husband's birthday today, my husband's 40th birthday. The album, Dad, shimmy, shimmy, AF. <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. I don't even know why I'm singing this to my husband because I know my husband will never watch this video. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lena. I mean, Alex. Happy birthday to you and many more. So tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man. I am in such a good mood right now. Let me just tell you, it is 4 o'clock. Well, actually, it is 4.26, okay, on Wednesday afternoon. And this is my last pre-filmed video to film before I vlog and then pack for vacation. I am... So excited. If you did not watch my video yesterday, um, my husband and I are with three other couples and uh, my brother and sister-in-law being one of them in Mexico to celebrate my husband's 40th birthday. I'm posting this video on Friday, the 21st, which is my husband's 40th birthday. So I want to say a very happy birthday to my husband. I'm so excited to be spending his birthday with him. And um, it's just, it's surreal. I mean, we've been together almost 16, August will be 16 years that we've been together. And it's just, it's crazy all the birthdays that we've been through together, mine, his, and it's just every year, it just keeps on getting better and better and better, you know? And I just still think to this day, after almost 16 years, my husband is just the greatest, the kindest, the hottest, the finest man in the entire world. And I love that man with every bit of my heart. And I'm so excited to celebrate his birthday with him. So anyway, I said happy birthday, Lena, <laughs> okay, first, because I say that sometimes in my vlogs, and people get very, very confused about why I say happy birthday, Lena, <laughs> in my vlogs, right? I mean, the people I've been around for a while, they know. So let me tell you, we were in Las Vegas for our friend Jason's 50th birthday a couple years ago. It was like 10 couples went to Vegas for Jason's 50th birthday. And so when we were there, um, I was in the pool. We were staying at the Encore. And I was at the pool at the end of the day. And it was like me and like, I don't know, like six other people or something like that. It was towards the very end of the day. And I walked by this like, cabana that had all these hats on it right and I'm in the pool and there's like this husband and wife or I don't know what they were but they're about my age and they were like making out and they were like you know really getting into it in the pool and stuff like that probably had a lot of drinks and things like that but anyway I noticed that they had these trucker hats on that were red and white okay and they said like happy birthday Lena on them <laughs> and um, I loved them and they both had one on that said happy birthday Lena on it okay L-A-I-N-A -I, -I. I still have the hat in my closet I should have brought it out for this video, but I didn't. So anyway, um, so I was sitting there and this woman in the cabana, she starts going, Lena, <laughs> Lena. And this woman kissing her husband. I'm not Lena. I know I'm not Lena. Right. And so this woman and her husband are just sitting there kissing and stuff. And finally the woman turns and she goes, what? And she was like, oh, I just wanted to ask you like some, she asked her some question or whatever. Right. So I go up and I said, oh, is it her birthday? And she goes, yeah, it's her birthday. And she was like, we had all these hats made and whatever. I said, I love those hats so much. I love that you did that because I love trucker hats, right? And she's like, do you want one of these hats? We have some, because there was like 20 of them sitting there that were still left. She's like, do you want one of these? I was like, do you care? And she was like, no, not at all. I'll take one. So I took it. And then that day I filmed videos in this birthday and, and, and that birthday hat. And I said, happy birthday, Lena, in that video. And that's where happy birthday, Lena started. <laughs> okay. For those of you that do not know. And what I love about it is that it's become a mainstay on my vlog that I say happy birthday, Lena. And there is some Lena out there, okay, that has no clue who Peter Mon is. And I still remember her from that pool, okay, being drunk as a skunk on her birthday, kissing her husband or whatever man she was with that night. I don't know, okay? But whoever she is, happy birthday to you too, Lena. And I hope that you are having the best. Well, it wouldn't be her birthday. Her birthday, that was in August, okay? So I think it was, yeah, Jason's birthday is in August. So that would have been um, in August. But happy pre-birthday to you, Lena wherever you're at but to my husband happy happy birthday oh my god 
So my husband, um, he got off work early today, and he is with a girlfriend getting one of those rejuvenation IVs. People always ask me which ones he gets. I don't know which ones he gets. I think he gets the, the hydration ones. So he's like, I think I'm going to get one of those IVs. So he's going with one of his girlfriends that couldn't go on this trip with us. He asked, like, everybody, and, like, our friends Melissa and Jason, they couldn't go because of this reason. My cousin Caroline, she had already had a committed trip to go to. So many people, there were so many reasons why they couldn't go. But the people that are going were very, very excited. It's four couples that we're really, really close with, and it's, it's kind of like a couple's trip. It's going to be so fun. I'm so excited. But I wanted to pre-film some videos. Um, I'm still going to cover drama. If drama happens, I will still cover it over here. I'll probably make a video or two on this drama channel, and I will be vlogging most days. I might take a day or two off of my vlog, but most days I'll be vlogging and talking about what we did that day on the trip. So if you want to hear what we're doing, I call them my vacation vlogs. Those will be over on Peter Vlogs. But I wanted to film a couple videos, uh, pre-videos. I actually am proud of myself because I have gotten so many videos done. I pre-filmed videos for Thursday, pre-filmed videos for Friday, and um, all I have to do left now is vlog and pack and so then we're on vacation and I cannot wait I'm so excited to go on vacation I got all my shows downloaded I got the sister wives downloaded I got the survivor downloaded I got love island because everybody's been asking me to watch that I got that downloaded I got some true crime downloaded I got what else do I have downloaded I got uh the resort off of peacock downloaded I got um oh god I have so many shows downloaded I've got sugar from apple tv I got all these shows I'm so excited to watch and movies and things like that so anyway I got my phone right here because I'm waiting for my husband to text me because he said he would text me when I was on his way home, right? And so I'm like, I'm trying to get this last drama video done. So this is what we're going to do, okay? This video will be as long as until my husband texts me and says he's going to come home. I thought as soon as I said that, he would text me and be like, I'm on my way home. And I'd be like, okay, well, this was a real short video today. So let me tell you what I do. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want, girl. Okay, hey, girl, she do. But anyway, I'm coming up with a whole line of merch that says she do on it. <laughs> It don't even make no sense that I don't care, okay? I, I use it all the time, right? She don't, she do, okay? She do is means I do, okay? That's what it means. And like when somebody says something, I go, well, she do. <laughs> I love that so much. And people have asked for merch for it. So I'm just coming up with real basic merch, okay? That says she do on it. And I, we'll all know what it means, okay? It means we're in. <laughs> That's what it means, okay? It means she do stands for yes, I am, okay? And if you don't know what that means, I don't either. So it don't really matter, okay? But I love she do. So anyway, kind of like a ski do, but not. That don't make no sense either. It doesn't really matter. I just like she do, okay? She do. I'll use it sometime in this video. You'll see, okay? So you got to stick around to see how I use she do in a sentence. It's kind of like a spelling competition. So I put this Instagram post up the other day, right? Because I was trying to think of some videos that I could pre-film. I was like, do a Q&A. No, my husband and I will probably do a couples Q&A because the last time we went to Miami, whenever we go on vacation, we always do a couples Q&A. In all honesty, Alex asked me like three or four times while you're on vacation. And the last time in Mexico, I was like, I don't really feel like it. I just want to like hang out and have fun with you and things like that, right? And so... I was like, let's just do the, we'll do the couples Q&A when we get back. Well, we never did. So I asked him if he wanted to do a couples Q&A for this trip. He's like, yeah, we usually do one for the trip. He, he, it's one, he loves, to, I know people think that like I'm sitting there tying him up to the bed and he asked, well, but the people are acting like I'm like, I'm making him do this. He always is like, you know, like, oh, I love doing these. Are we going to do them? Whatever. So we'll probably do it for my birthday. You know, um, my birthday is the 29th. This is the 21st. We're a week apart. So um, we'll probably do it for my birthday, do the couples Q&A. And um, so, yeah, so that's coming up. So I knew I wasn't going to do a couples Q&A. So I was like, I don't want to do a Q&A and then a couples Q&A. So I didn't really know what to do. So I was like, I'm going to put out an Instagram story and say, if you want to be part of any of these Q&As, you got to follow me on Instagram and follow my story. Okay, and because you never know when it's gonna pop up. It usually pops up about four o'clock in the morning when I think about it, right? But I was like, what could I do? And I was like, I'm just gonna put out a post. And I think I put the post said something like, I screenshot it, but now I can't find it when I was looking through there because I got so many screenshots. I was like, um, ask me what I think about any, like, you just name somebody and ask me what I think about them. Okay, I did not know when I posted this. I mean, I really thought I'd get like 20 of them, and I thought it'd be a few drama channels, Jeffree Star, Trisha. I thought it'd be people like that, right? I got so many different people, and I mean, some people, I don't even know who they are. I'm just going to, actually, I usually don't say, like, I don't know who this person is. If I don't know who the person is, I'm just going to say I don't know who the person is. I got so many people, and, um that, I mean, I got so many names on here that I was like, I might have to split this up to a two-parter. So we might have to split this up into a two-parter. But um, I want to get into this and I want to start reading them. Now, I have screenshot all of them. I have, right now for this video, one, two, three, okay, eight, 
I don't, it doesn't matter. Let's just go through here and I will tell you, okay, you guys ask what I thought about all these people and I will tell you what I think. So the first one is Josh from the, da the Dad Challenge, Challenge podcast. I know absolutely nothing about him. I think I maybe watched one of the podcasts and kind of just listened to it to cover it for something that I had to cover for a drama channel video like years ago. I don't know anything about that channel. I don't know anything about him. I don't know anything about that whatsoever. So, um, somebody asked me what I think about Alex from I'm Out. I'm Alex. Okay, so I know that there's a lot of scandal going on with like that right now. Um, I am kind of looking into it. I'm watching the videos. A lot of people have asked me to address this whole situation because um, it's t something that I would typically address over here. If you guys want me to address it, I will. I don't want to give a negligent response to this. This is something that I've said a lot in the past when I'm covering very sensitive topics. It's really important for me um, to... It's one of the reasons why like certain, certain topics I don't ever cover over here because if I don't know a lot of about it or I haven't watched videos about it or read a lot about it, I don't want to give some some negligent response to it um, and add to, I, I feel like in the world that we live in today that, you know, there's so many um, that uncarefully thought out responses that people just react, 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 react. And in a situation like this, I don't want to give... Um, I, I just don't want to give a, uh, uh, just, you know, it's like the eight passenger thing. So many people wanted me to make videos about that. And there was so much to look at and I didn't know. And I was like watching a video here and watching a video there. And there was just so much that I thought, no, this is, this is a topic that you don't need to discuss. So if you guys want me to cover it, I mean, I will, if I, if I look into the information and I see that, I know that I, I've seen a couple other channels that have made videos about it. I'm going to watch the videos and read what's out there about it. If you guys want me to do it, but I, I feel like this is something that I need to do some research on before I just pop off and give a response to it. Um, Mama Tot on um, TikTok. I love Mama Tot. I actually got a couple people that asked me about Mama Tot and they said, you guys are very, very similar in your approaches. Um, I found her before her son passed away and she would do these videos. And what I thought was so interesting is she would respond to these TikToks in a way, it would be somebody that would like be really down on themselves about something and you know she would just give these most uplifting and I, I'll be honest with you I don't know a lot about Mama Tot. I don't know a lot about her personality and things like that I just know her from what I've seen on TikTok and I don't really watch TikToks anymore for a while I did and that's kind of how I found her but I really hardly ever watch TikToks anymore um but she would do these responses to people where they would be like and she'd say oh you know sweetie just stop beating yourself up too much like life is short you know you deserve to be loved and I loved her spirit of lifting other people up and then when her son passed away and I watched all those TikToks I was absolutely devastated for her. I just was absolutely devastated for her. You know, I had a friend of mine that was in a very similar situation as Mama Tot with her son and her son passing away in the way that he did and things like that. And I had a friend of mine and I can just remember my friend was unconsolable at that time. And yet here you have Mama Tot online and with such grace and such beauty and respect to the whole situation and to her son, how she was responding to it, I just was mesmerized. And it's people like her in that situation that are really true role models for me that really teach me how to respond to tragedy and to respond to sadness in our life. I mean, I think we have the right to respond to tragedy with anger, fear, or whatever, however we want to respond to it, right? But the way that she handled it was such grace, um, and I just was mesmerized. And I just, I thought it was beautifully respectful of her son and she shared on there uh, anger and fear and things like that but in a very respectful way and I, I think she is um I think she's teaching so many people you know things out there um in the world so um that's why I think of Mama Todd I did see that Mama Todd went to Michaela Nagara's wedding she looked beautiful I saw the whole TikToks about her getting ready and things like that I thought that was interesting that she went to her wedding. But anyway, but I love Mama Todd. If there's something problematic about her, I do not know. Is there? I, I, if, there if there is, I don't know what it is. I don't know everything problematic about every person online. I just want to make that clear. I think that's kind of the misconception that whenever I, I'm like, that's why sometimes when I do Q&As, people ask me about people and I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, is this the most problematic person in the world? Like sometimes the songs I sing, I even have to look up online and I'll be like, is this person problematic? Because I don't want to sing a song that's problematic. And then people will be like, ooh, you sang that song or it's by an, art, you know, an artist and things like that. Like, I've said this for a long time. I love one of my favorite songs from back in the day. Oh my God, I can remember dancing up in the club to it. I can hear it in my head right now, Step in the Name of Love by R. Kelly, okay? I will never sing that song in a video. I mean, he had him ruin that song for me, okay? 
he done ruined that song for me. So I will never sing that song again. I will never sing it, but I, I loved that song from back in the day. I did, he ruined that song, you know? So anyway, so I don't know everything problematic about everybody. I think that that's the assumption that like, oh, you're a drama commentary channel. You should keep your finger on the pulse of all. I don't know that. I mean, there's a lot of people. I'm, I might know, uh, I might know 20 to 100 influencers by, by name. 10 of them, I might know a lot about them. Other than that, no, I don't know everything about a lot of these people. You know what I mean? Um, somebody asked me about Sherilyn Barnes. Sherilyn Barnes has followed me for a long time, and I followed her for a long time. She has a song, um, that is titled One of My Least Favorite Words Ever, and that's Moist. <laughs> I think Sherilyn Barnes is absolutely hilarious. And I know that she says and does a lot of problematic things. Um, but that's all part of her humor. Um, and I was kind of surprised that somebody asked me about her because she's not as well known as she was a couple years ago. She was kind of like a really well known, like gay icon, comedy icon years ago. Um, there's all these, this kind of like mystique around Sherilyn Barnes. Like, is she real or is she a character or is, is it a real person or is of a character and you never really know and that's part of it you know and it's very much like um you know i remember years ago why can't i remember that guy's name hold on just a second let me look it up um andy kaufman is his name but i can remember years ago uh talking to trisha paytas and trisha paytas said something to the effect of that she really loved and appreciated the comedy of andy kaufman because you never knew what was a character and what wasn't and that's a really hard thing to play into for years on end right Sherilyn barnes is somebody that has really played into that for years and years and years you know it's like to some degree like the boulet brothers like you can't really find i mean i think you can find one picture of them out of drag online but there's really not any other pictures of them out of drag online i mean they they have these different personas and so you don't really know what's a character or what's not i think to go to those lengths for entertainment value um and to go to those lengths for uh your artistry is literal genius i really do i really i highly respect it I think some of the jokes that she makes are kind of like, I mean, borderline offensive, but um, I, her attitude is just like, F with me and I'm gonna F with you. I really highly respect that to some degrees, and I think she's kind of, I think she's, I don't think she's kind of funny. I think she's really funny. And I, I live for the fact that she follows me. I don't know why she does, but I love that. So anyway, hey, Sherilyn, how are you doing? Um... Uh, RuPaul. You know, I have kind of a, a, a different opinion about RuPaul than I think a lot of people. You know, I grew up with, like, RuPaul getting famous. Like, RuPaul's fame started happening around the time that I came out. Like, I can remember her coming to Indianapolis and, um... I actually think RuPaul, like, prefers to go by, like, he, right? But, like, RuPaul coming to Indianapolis and um, performing Supermodel at this place called The Warehouse here downtown. Like, I remember that. I was probably, like, 20 or 21 at the time, 21. I remember all that kind of stuff. I remember watching the Geraldo shows with Geraldo, you know, with the, the club kids and RuPaul being on the, there with Michael Alleg and, you know, um, you know, all, all the people that were, you know, what's the, uh, Richie Rich and all those people and Amanda Lepore and all those people. The fact that that's where RuPaul started, you know, doing like garage drag, band, you know, punk stuff like that in Georgia, moving to New York, becoming a club kid. And then where RuPaul is now is like when you want to literally talk about success, like it's, that's unbelievable to me, right? And I think that a lot of things that RuPaul, a lot of the, the allegations against RuPaul and things like that with like the fracking and all that kind of stuff, I don't know that I understand enough about it to, I mean, I've looked into it a little bit. I obviously don't agree with that kind of stuff, right? But I think that the good that RuPaul has done for the world, especially for the LGBTQI plus community, offering drag queens a platform that they never would have had, offering the world exposure to drag queens that nobody would have ever seen. I mean, I've watched every season of RuPaul's Drag Race and things like that, on and on and on, giving all these people amazing careers and things like that is, is really unbelievable. It's really been at the forefront of all that for years and years and years. And as always, if you've watched the career from the, her career from the very beginning, has always really been fighting for LGBTQIA rights from the very, very beginning. Um, I didn't love that RuPaul wouldn't include trans people on the show for a long time because RuPaul, who drew up, grew up in the drag community, I grew up in the drag community, what you know is that trans people are a very prominent part of the drag community. I mean, it's 
I mean, it's literally a huge part of the drag community is the trans community. And so to just ignore that entire population, I think, you know, I'm at a point in my life right now where it's not necessarily always about condemning somebody. It's about understanding their motives and where they're coming from. I think that RuPaul thought maybe at that time that the world was not ready for that kind of exposure, that they weren't going to be that accepting of trans people on a national platform like that. When RuPaul was called out for it and then started including people and had Peppermint on the show and things like that, and then Peppermint was on Traders and whatever, um, I think that that's really important. Do I think that it was a divisive move on RuPaul's part? Absolutely. You know, I think that some of the things that they've changed on the show and the way that they do things is very divisive out of respect. Um, I don't like that RuPaul is always the last one to speak on things. I wish they would. I don't like RuPaul's alignment with certain people um, that I do not think that are good role models for the LGBTQI plus community. But overall, I feel like that RuPaul has done a, a lot of really good things for the LGBTQI plus community. And that being said, I just want to say this. If I sat down and I had a conversation with RuPaul, I believe that RuPaul would be willing to, wouldn't be like, no, 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 no. I think RuPaul would be willing to have that conversation with me or anybody else and take a look at, you know, his responsibility and those things and why he does align with it and maybe explain some of those things, right? Did an inter he did an interview years ago with Oprah Winfrey and I loved the interview. And in there, Oprah says, what's the meaning of life? And RuPaul says, I think the meaning of life is to basically, because RuPaul's sober too. Like, I'm sober. I've been sober since December 17th of 1904. And he says in there, I think the meaning of life is to, uh, you know, repair the wreckage of your past, try to clean up your life as best as you can, and live the best life you can and be an example of what, something to this effect, be an example of what an amazing life can look like. And I love that, right? Like, I love that, that that's his definition of a meaning of life. So that's what I think about RuPaul. <clears throat> okay, um, Captain Sandy. I mean, how can you not love Captain Sandy from Below Deck Mediterranean? I love Captain Sandy, okay? Her wife. I mean, they are such a gorgeous couple, aren't they? I love Captain Sandy. Here's the thing, though. <clears throat> if you watch Below Deck Mediterranean, is that Captain Sandy has no clue what is going on in that boat, right? She is, like, has ideas of what... I mean, she's, like, on her... Like, when she's, like, not at the captain's deck... She's, like, in her room, like, texting her wife, drinking coffee. She has no clue about the romances. And, I mean, last season with, like, Luca, I mean, she ruined, like, a whole thing for Luca. She's like, oh, this girl. Well, I mean, she has no clue. It's, but it's so kind of funny a little bit. It's very Lisa Vanderpump-ish, like, with Vanderpump Rules and now Vanderpump Villas. Like, she has no clue about the interactions with people, the romances, the cheating. I mean, she has no clue. They're just, a, a, they're just aloof to all of that. And I kind of love that about Captain Sandy. Um, I think Captain Sandy, being a woman and a lesbian in the world that she is, which is in yachting, as a captain in yachting, I think is such an important message to the world in her position. And she's talked about how when she started, there weren't a lot of women that were captains and yachting. And I think it's really, really, her role is so important. And to have it on an international platform with a television show like that, and the way that she interacts with people. And I love, like, last week she was talking to, I can't remember who she was um, talking to, Aisha, I think. And Aisha was, like, talking to one of her stews, and she overheard it. And she said, treating somebody with kindness like that is how you lead. It's moments like that that I love Captain Sandy because she notices those small nuances about people. And I love that about Captain Sandy. I love Captain Sandy. Um, Lucille Ball. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> is there drama? I'm always afraid when somebody asks me about something, like, what do I think about it? Lucille Ball, like, I watched the movie with Nicole Kidman. Love the movie. I, w I watched I Love Lucy all the time when I was growing up. I thought it was funny. I didn't think it was, like, the greatest thing in the entire world. I don't know that I feel like Lu Lucille Ball has really impacted me really that much in my life. I will tell you that there was a movie when I was, like, in middle school. And I think the movie was called Stone Soup. I have it on DVD, but I think you can watch it on YouTube. And Lucille Ball played a homeless uh, a woman in New York City. And um, then another person's a journalist, this woman. And she tries to act like she's homeless to, like, get with her and, like, find out what the world is like. Like, or she works for social services or something. I can't remember. I love that movie so much. It was a made-for-TV movie. It was one of, 
I think Lucille Ball's most fantastic roles. It really had a lot to do with me. Um, the Homeless Initiative which is something that I was very, very interested in. One of the reasons why, not just addiction, but why I got into, um, into social work. There are three reasons why I went and got my master's degree in social work. And obviously the first one is addiction and recovery was the main thing. The second thing was um, homelessness and um, the Homeless Initiative, especially here in Indianapolis. I wanted to learn more about it and how to get involved. And the third thing was how to help sex workers and meeting them where they're at and trying to help sex workers, especially sex workers on the street, and how to meet them and not judge them and how to help them with where they're at um, and helping them get good medical care, good dental care, good insurance and things like that. Um, and those were things that I was really, really interested in. That was one of the reasons why I got involved um, in social work. So Lucille Ball did kind of have an impact on that, I guess. But other than that, I don't really know much about Lucille Ball. <laughs> um, okay, let's go in here and see. Um, Jessica Kent, you did a video with her once, but I learned a lot about her since, kind of worried. I, you know, every time that I do a video about Jessica Kent, people always ask me what I think about Jessica Kent. Um, I do not keep up with the drama of Jessica Kent, okay? The way that Jessica Kent defines her sobriety and the way that I define my sobriety are completely different. I think we know that, all right? Um, I don't judge anybody else's journey. That is not mine to do. Um, I wish Jessica the best. There became a point, um, I, I've shared this before, so I'll just share it on here. Jessica reached out to me and she was like, there is so much drama going on with my ex. And she's like, do you know about this stuff? I only knew about it because people had asked me to cover it. And I'm not going to cover, do a video on somebody that was kind enough. I mean, Jessica has always been very, very kind to me. And um, I was like, not going to turn around and make a video on stuff that I didn't even know. I know her ex and she had gone through this horribly abusive situation and I felt bad for her. But like, she was putting out video after video about video after about it. And she reached out to me and she asked me, and she was like, we talked on the phone. She's like, I don't really know what to do with this and blah, 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 whatever. And like, you know, like I don't want it to be about all the drama because she got famous off of having it in a prison channel, right? And I said to her, and like, this is a good example of how people have reached out to me and done the complete opposite. And then I'm like, mm -mm, okay, I can't continue to watch this. So I was like, I think she's like, I said, do you want to continue to talk about it? She's like, no, I don't at all. This is a long time ago, you guys. Okay. I mean like probably a year ago. And I said, okay, well, if it were me, what I would do is I would make one last video clearing up everything. And then I would say, and this is going to be my last video. I might every month or two do an update, but other than that, I'm not doing it anymore. She's like, I think that's a really good idea. I'm going to make that last video. I'm going to post it. And she's like, then I'm done with it. Well, that's not what happened. She's continued to go on and on and on and on and on and talk about all this drama. And she has every right to. It's her life. She she can talk about it. You know, a lot of people are like, what's true? What's not true? I don't get into all that with her. Okay. I don't get into that with a lot of people. I don't know. All right. I think Jessica, sh Jessica Kent has had a lot of shit in her life that's happened to her that I don't wish on anybody. Okay. All I know is how she's treated me. And Jessica Kent has always treated me kindly with respect and has been honorable to me. And that's all I can speak of her. And I try to judge people based on how they treat me. You know, um, I didn't continue to watch her after that. Every once in a while, she'll throw up a video and I'll watch it that has something to do with like, cause I love her. I love her prison videos, you know? Um, and she'll do, she's done a lot of drama videos and I'm like, okay, well this is the path that she chose. And that, that's her, that she had to choose that, but I couldn't keep up with it anymore. I was like, I don't like, I just can't with this anymore, you know? So I wish Jessica Kent the best. I mean, uh, she was very kind to me and if she ever needs anything, I'm there for her. She seems very happy in love right now. And it's so, so funny. I actually, I did reach out to her about this because, so she's dating this guy, this burner guy, right? And I remember when I originally started talking to her. Oh, she's got, she'll probably get pissed if I say this, but uh, maybe not. She'll probably think it's kind of funny. Anyway, so when I first started talking to her and Christina Randall, because I was obsessed with these prison channels because I've had so many friends of mine that have gone to prison. I've done my, you know, time in jail and things like that too back in the day before I got sober. And so I was watching all these different per, uh, uh, channels. She doesn't remember this because I asked her and I said something to her. This is going to stop in a minute. So hold on. Okay. Um, she doesn't remember this because I asked her just recently, like a month ago, I said something to her. I said, I'm so happy that you're happy and whatever. You know, people are saying stuff to her about like, you're having a guy around your kids that has uh, face tats. And so, when, do, when is that the judgment of somebody as a good person or not on whether they have a face tat? I mean, are we like 85 and living in 1952? Like seriously? 
I mean, some of the kindest people in my entire life have their entire bodies tattooed and multiple piercings. Why are we judging people based on that? Like, seriously? Like, that is such a weird vibe to me. But anyway, um, and he makes her happy. You know? Like, all these people want to judge it. It's like, oh, this is too quick and whatever. I know couples that met, got married a week later and been together for 40 years. Don't judge somebody else's marriage or relationship. You don't know what's going on there, you know? And he seems to make her happy, and I'm happy for her. But I do remember when I first started talking to her, and I was like, have you seen this burner guy? Like, I think he's really hot, <laughs> okay? And she was like, oh, I don't really know about him. I don't know much about him. I don't know, I don't know if I like him or not or whatever. I mean, nothing, right? Like, she was like, okay. So it's so funny to me, and all these years later, she ends up with him, right? And I messaged her, and I was like, girl, do you remember when I asked you about him back in the day? And she was like, no, I don't think I, I don't remember what she said. But anyway, she was like, no, I don't think I really do remember him. But anyway, Jessica's always been very, very kind to me, okay? I can tell you right now, I should, I'll, watch, I'll say this, and I'll have to do something else, but I will never make a horrible video about Jessica Kent on this channel because just unless she unless she full on came for me <laughs> and then I would defend myself but Jessica has always been really really kind to me okay I don't necessarily understand the way that she goes about things and constantly this I will say Jessica is a good example that she constantly is throwing at people on her Instagram stories that come for her and she's t blocking people if I did that I mean, that would be, there would be 50 videos made if I did that, right? But Jessica Kent does it, and it's self-protection. I'm very proud of her for doing that, okay? But I can't do that. If I got in videos or Instagram stories and I came for people that way, oh my God, there would be so much, I, it would be multiple what I would receive after that. I'm proud of her for standing up for herself, you know? Do I agree with everything and every way she handles things? No. Am I going to judge her for how she defines her sobriety or what that journey looks like for her? Absolutely not. I've had friends of mine that have relapsed so many times you never think they got sober and they now have 20 years. I'm not judging somebody for their journey and neither should you. That's their journey, not yours, right? So, you know, it's just, it's sad to me. Um, but Jessica's always been very, very nice to me. Um, okay, let's see who else somebody asked me. Um, Britney Spears, somebody said her IG creeps me out. I don't look at her IG anymore. I think that Britney Spears... I think Britney Spears is obviously somebody that needs a lot of help, um, and I think we all know that. I think if the conservatorship was going to work because she needed help and she needed guardianship because she couldn't make her own choices, I think the, the conser conservatorship would have worked uh, years and years and years ago. I think that what it proved, okay, of uh, Britney Spears coming out of it is that the conservatorship never worked to begin with. I think she deserves to be a free woman. Um, I think she deserves to make her money. I mean, listen, this is the thing. I'm not putting no diagnosis on uh, Britney Spears. I think Britney Spears was a young woman. This is where I like to understand things, right? I think that Britney Spears was a young woman that a lot of older people used and produced to make a lot of money off of. I think she didn't realize that till too late because what was done to her, that she was over-sexualized at a young age and that was all used for money, 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 money. I think she was used by a lot of people. I think she's had it. I think she has said, do I think that she has some mental health issues? Yeah, I think she does. I think most of us do, right? Do I think she's also in a state where she's like, I don't really give a fuck what anybody thinks about me or what I do because people have tried to control me for the last 30 years and I'm not letting it happen anymore. The reality is those gals lived up in Grey Gardens, okay, for years and years and years. They made a famous documentary off of them, okay, Little Edie and all that kind of stuff. And nobody was coming and doing conservatorships over them. The only reason they're wanting to do a conservatorship over Britney Spears is because she's got a lot of money that they can abuse, right? Let her live her life. People that are not necessarily normal or that have mental health issues or that eccentric all the time are living their lives, right? We're not putting conservatorships over them. Most people that have mental health issues in this country cannot even get appropriate mental health treatment because it's so expensive. Yet Britney Spears sits in a conservatorship for years on end and they don't even give her appropriate uh, the appropriate medical and psychiatric attention that she deserved. And now everybody's like, oh, she's crazy. She needs to go back into a conservatorship. Let her live her life. I'm not saying that she seems right to me because she doesn't. And there's obviously a lot of issues. She's there. Let her live her life. That's how I feel about it, you know? So, anyway, that's what I think. Um, the HOA board, the current HOA president. I don't really have... It's so funny because a lot of people keep on thinking that, like, I I mean, I have some issues with how the HOA board is run and I, and, the, and recently with, like, the changing the pool hours and stuff like that. I have really no issues with the HOA president. I've never met her. I've talked to her on the phone. I try to be very, very helpful with her and stuff like that. She's always been very nice to me when I talk to her. She has. Um, it was interesting because the other day, 
Um, I saw something that, I, I saw that she was really good friends with a really good friend of mine, and I was like, well, if my friend likes her that I've known forever, and like, then, and they're really close, then she must be a really good person. So, you know what? I'm kind of at this stage. My neighbor and I decided, so the pool hours changed. They changed the pool hours in the pool, but what we realized was that the alarm never changed, okay? So, we're like, you know what? Let's just not fight this fight. She's trying to do the best that she can. The HOA board, I mean, it's a lot of fun to talk about with my neighbors and talk about it and videos and stuff like that. I don't really take it that seriously when I'm not talking about it with my neighbors. Right? It's not something that just keeps me up at night and stuff like that, right? I will say that yesterday, who I call my favorite neighbors that walk in the street, and he was a former HOA president. He's been on the board for like 20 years or something like that. I said something to him yesterday about, he's like, what's your approach with the pool now? And I said, I think it's just a fight I'm not going to fight. Like, I'll just abide by the hours and I don't want to make anybody upset. I just want to get along with my neighbors. And he was like, that's a really healthy attitude. He's like, that's actually an attitude that's not really shared on the HOA board. He was like, would you be willing to be on the HOA board? And I was like, I go, the only way that I would be on the HOA board is if you knew that I was a shoe in that you knew I was going to be on it. I don't want to run for it and then not get, get voted for it. I said, I can't handle that kind of rejection. He goes, oh no. He's like, I think we've got some spots opening up that I think that you would be great for. You could just move into. So I think that it's just like a vote that goes out if I'm just the only person that runs. So I might be on the HOA board and I would enjoy that. It would give me something to contribute to in the neighborhood. I always said I would never be on it, but it was always kind of a joke for me, but I might run for it and we'll see. Maybe it'll be a way for me to get involved and stuff like that. You know, and, and I love my neighborhood. I love my neighbors. I feel completely blessed to have the neighbors that I do. I have amazing neighbors, you know? Um, do I bitch and complain about the HOA board? Yeah, sure. So does everybody else in the neighborhood. Doesn't mean they hate each other. You know what I mean? Doesn't mean they love every agreement that or every decision that's made. Um... Carl from Summer House, I don't know anything about him. I don't watch it. Teresa and Louie, I don't watch Real Housewives in New Jersey. Um, Nick Accato, somebody said, I have a lot of sympathy because I also struggle with my weight, but wish he'd stop trolling. I have not watched um, Nick Accato, Avocado, in, or whatever he goes by, um, in years. I haven't watched him since Trish. Okay, so let me tell you the story about this. So, Trisha Paytas... I can't even remember the, the, the real story of back. I'd have to go back and watch the videos and stuff. But, like, Trisha said something about it in a video or ghosted him or something like that. I can't remember. And then he came out and he was really upset with Trisha. This was, like, big drama back in the day. Do you remember this? And then she wrote and really acknowledged his feelings. And I made a video and I said... Something like, you're holding his pain, just apologize to him and all this kind of stuff. And I was really going out of my way. In all, in all honesty, I had really no, like, uh, what do you call it? Like, I didn't feel any... This is like one of those videos where, like, this is the thing. I'm sitting here saying it, and I'm like, he is going to get so upset about this. And in all honesty, I haven't watched him talk to him in years, so I can really care less. Do you? Okay, I hope your OnlyFans is working great for you and all your channels. I mean, people come for me. He's got as many channels as I do, right? And I haven't watched him in a long time. Actually, I watched a video the other day because somebody said he had lost a lot. Somebody did some video where he lost a lot of weight, or he said he did, and I went and I looked on the scale, and I was like, for me, I cannot watch channels where people use medical issues and gaining weight to the point of health issues is to me using medical issues that are detrimental to your health and you're encouraging that to make money on a channel. I just, I cannot be part of that. So that was one of the reasons why I stopped watching Nick. I never really regularly watched Nick. I covered him with the Stephanie Sue situation back in the day. Um, cause I felt really bad for her. But when I covered it with the Trisha Paytas situation, I kind of went out on a limb for him. If you want to know the truth, I think he messaged me or something. I can't remember how it went. And, um, so I made the video because he was like, I can't believe that you want to defend me against Trisha and all this kind of stuff. So I felt bad for him in the situation. I made a video. And when I made the video, like it wasn't enough. He was so pissed. He was like, I can't believe you said this. And he, I was like, you know what? I'm done. Okay. The Trisha Paytas, Nick Akato, Avocado fight is not one that I'm going to get involved in. And then they made up anyway. And it's like, okay, where's my apology. Why did I get involved in a fight that I had no, like, I had, I, I had no dog in the fight. Why was I in that, right? Like, I had no part of that. There was no reason for me to be in that fight. So, that was stupid for me. I should never have gotten involved in that. Okay. Uh, somebody said Tati. Um... Somebody said, it, it makes me kind of sad that you are hard on her. Just being honest. Love you. You know, it's interesting to me that people see me as calling out somebody that not doesn't disclose appropriately as being hard on somebody, right? 
I have no issue with Toddy whatsoever. And um, I, I don't, and I, I've made that very clear in those videos. I've said that I'm rather indifferent to Toddy today. I've liked Toddy in the past and stuff today. I'm not responsible for your love or dislike for uh, somebody out there. That's not my responsibility in covering a situation. If I'm going to do a video and I'm going to call Toddy out for not disclosing, and, and I'm, to be honest with you, one of the things that really pisses me off is when people say you're making this up and you're lying, and I'm literally showing screenshots, reading the FTC guidelines, and proving in a video on multiple occasions that Toddy is not disclosing it. And people say that I'm being hard on Toddy. How is that being hard on Toddy? Okay. Was people calling out Jacqueline Hill for the, 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 all that kind of stuff when she did back in the day for not disclosing affiliate links? Was that being too hard on Jacqueline? So if I'm telling you, um, negligent business practices of an influencer or somebody out there that you love, me, me informing the consumer about their negligent practices, okay, and their dishonesty with their fans is being too hard on that person. Can somebody explain that to me? I'm not calling her names. I'm not calling that that. I'm, I, I'm sharing with her, and I, I, I'm sharing with you. That's up to Toddy whether she continues to do that or not, you know? That's up to Toddy whether or not she continues to choose to disclose or not to disclose. It's not gonna change how much money she makes. It's a deception with her audience. I don't know what to tell you. Um, you know, it's, I don't dislike her. I don't hate the woman. I really am rather indifferent to her and any of these people that I talk about. There's very, and nobody that I've been asked about yet do I really feel that strongly about one way or the other. You know what I mean? Um, thoughts? Somebody said, your thoughts on Barry and Sperry, uh, Barry and Sarri, uh, Bailey Sarian in the true crime space of YouTube. I love Bailey Sarian. I think she's gorgeous. I think she's a very independent thinker. I love the way that she does things. I think she really invented this whole new genre of true crime where it's like now there's so many channels that are doing like murder and makeup or talking about things while they're walking around their house. I mean, it wasn't like these highly scripted videos like back in the day. She did, she, she reinvented that. Um, I think she is very genius in how she thinks about things and how she does. She is one true crime person. Um, somebody in here asked me about what I thought about Stephanie Harlow. I really enjoy Stephanie Harlow too. I think Stephanie Harlow leans heavy on the opinions and speculations of things that there's no basis for sometimes, which, but that, I think she does a lot of things on her videos that would be like conversations we'd have. I think when it comes to true crime, you have to be respectful of the, the truth and the story sometimes. But that's only, I've only seen that a couple times with Stephanie Harlow. I adore Stephanie Harlow's videos too. I adore Kendall Ray's true crime videos as well. Uh, Kendall Ray, Christina Randall, um, Stephanie Harlow, and Bailey Sarian are the top four true crime people that I watch a lot. And that guy, what's his name, Baller or something like that, Mr. Baller, I love his videos too. I don't know if that's his name, but I really like his videos too. His videos are so highly done. He's like a team of people. Um, but I love all of them, and I think that they're all like really free thinkers, and I think that they've turned their love in it. Kendall Ray especially, I think, is somebody that is so respectful of the victims. Like, I follow her on Twitter, and she's constantly like putting out things about like missing people, and they all kind of do that to some degree, you know? And so you can tell that they really care about the victim stories, and that's something that's important to me. I wouldn't watch a true crime person cover something where I didn't feel like they were respectful of the victims. So that's what I think about that. Okay, um, let's go on. I don't know who these people are. I'm not even going to mention them because I don't know. So many people are asking me about Captain Sandy. Somebody said thinks she's a creep. Did she just do something recently? I don't know if she did. Gabriel Zamora. Um, I don't really have any real huge take with Gabriel Zamora. I, I, to me, it's interesting um, that Gabriel Zamora really has any kind of prominence whatsoever. I don't, like, I think he's, like, back in the day, I enjoyed watching him and listening to him talk with other people. I think he would be great at, like, interviewing people. I know that I think he has a podcast and TikToks and stuff that he does out there now, right? But, like, his fame, it's so interesting to me that he's always talking about everybody else. Because if you watch Gabriel Zamora, like, his past history, his rise to fame was really literally on the coattails of other people. And I don't mind that. That's networking in any other industry, right? But I don't really mind that. But that's really, truly what it was. And then he just kind of stopped posting all of a sudden. Now he just posts on TikTok and Instagram and things like that. I mean, like, a 
lot of other people. I just stopped posting. Gabriel Zamora has always been very nice to me. Even, I will say this, even when I have, like, been really, really hard, the no Tati no thing and things like that, he continued to follow me, continued to be very supportive of me. After the accident, I will tell you, he was one of the only beauty influencers that reached out to me and um, was like, hey, I hope that you're doing well. I heard what happened and things like that. Um, he was one of the only ones that did. And um, Gabriel Zamora has always been very, very nice to me. I would love to have Gabriel Zamora in, a, in a, a, an interview for an hour to ask him, because I think that man knows so much behind the scenes. I think that would be interesting. He'll, I don't think he'll ever come out and do it, because I think, with anybody, because I think that it's all about his friendships, and I think he thinks people don't care anymore. But, I mean, he was really, really close to Jeffree Star. He's been really close to Manny and those people. I think he really knows the ins and outs of all of it. Um... Okay, I'm Alex. Somebody asked me, and I addressed that again. Somebody asked me about Jessica Kent. I already addressed that. Doja Cat. I don't really know much about Doja Cat. I like a couple of her songs. If something happened, I don't know much about her. Do you like inter any international seasons of Drag Race? Yes, I watched several of them. And um, somebody asked me, oh, the same person asked me, do you like Chapel Run? Okay, so I wanted to say this. I don't know anything about her. And a lot of people are like, I think you would really love Chapel Run. Is that, I don't even know if that's how you pronounce her name. Is that how you pronounce her name? Chapel Run? Anyway, I looked her up online, and apparently she has this new album out. She's touring and things like that. I literally don't know anything about her, okay? I'm not going to act like I know about somebody I don't, okay? So, um, I went through and I was like, look, I think she's got like three albums out or something like that. And she has this new one out, something Midwest. I know I'm sounding so ignorant right now, but what I would really like is, if you guys are big Chapel Run fans out there, give me like your top three favorite songs and I will download them and listen to her. Because I would really like to hear some of her music. I just don't know where to start. Um, Penelope from Bridgerton. Oh my God, I love her so much. How could you not? So gorgeous, so beautiful, so clever, so smart, so funny, right? I mean, the perfect woman. I love Penelope from uh, Bridgerton so much, and I just finished it. Um, Ethan Klein. Well, you know, Ethan Klein's interesting to me. I I don't really follow closely. I will say this: um, the the problematic stuff that Ethan Klein has put out. I know a lot of people have issues with him because he's put out a lot of problematic stuff. I don't watch that that closely. Um, I think his very slow kind of dark humor, um, I relate to a lot. I think that he is naturally very hilarious. I didn't find him to be that way at first, I will be honest with you. But sometimes when I watch the 8th Tree podcast, and that is actually something that I do turn on quite a bit and watch some of it, sometimes it's just like, I mean, he will say something, and it's just like, and it's just so subtle, and I'm like, oh God, he is so funny. So that's why I think of Ethan Klein, you know? I don't know about the whole relationship with, I'm not going to go into the whole relationship with he and Trisha and all that kind of stuff today. I feel like I've said enough about that in the past. Bethany Frankel can't stand her. I don't like, she's one of my least favorite housewives ever. And I think she is stirring so much shit up for relevancy. It's so obvious with the housewives when they do that, when they're kind of stirring shit up for relevancy. It's so incredibly obvious. Anyway, um, somebody said Chuck Norris. I don't know, thought it was random enough. I don't think anything about Chuck Norris. I don't even know that I've... My dad liked Chuck Norris when I was growing up. I think I might have seen, like, one or two movies of Chuck Norris's. Somebody else asked me about Ethan Klein. Um, somebody said, Joey Graceffa gives me bad vibes. Um, I think that Joey Graceffa is so concerned... Well, it's interesting to me, because I think that Joey Graceffa is so concerned with his public perception, or what people perceive of him, right? That, um... Like, what he and his ex expect out of other people. Like, I mean, they talk mad shit about people, right? And always have. And I've heard that behind the scenes. They talk mad shit or nasty to people. Joey and Daniel. Um, I've heard that from multiple people. Um, so, it's interesting to me that he, he puts on this perception. I'm like, such a nice guy, blah, 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 whatever. Like, I don't think anybody would be surprised to find me talking shit off camera because I talk shit on camera, right? But when you act like you're one way and you're completely different and then your best friend goes through this huge scandal, you don't even feel like you need to address it to your audience. And then you're doing all of these like queer baiting, that just the, all the videos of like pick a gay out of the line, pick a lesbian out of the line. I think they are, they take us back 30 years. I don't really appreciate much that he does as a role model for the LGBTQIA plus community. I think Joy Graceffa needs to figure out a few things for himself before he wants to 
to be a role model for anything else. Um, I think he's so worried, and this is what I think happens with a lot of these people. They're so worried about their career and their public perception that they become kind of a morphed version of themselves. So what you see on camera is not what you get in real life. It's very similar to Shane Dawson, um, that what you see on camera is 100% not what you get in real life. And I think with Joey Graceffa, it's that. On Joey Graceffa on camera, it's like, hey, how are you? Oh my God. And I have heard behind the scenes that that is the total opposite. But if he shows who he is on camera, then all of a sudden, um, people will no longer like him, right? That's his fear. And the problem with that is that that's what happened to Shane Dawson. Shane Dawson, people started realizing that who he was on camera wasn't who he was behind the scenes. And that led to his supposed cancellation, which he never had. With Joey Graceffa, it could be very similar to that. The thing is, is that I don't think that people are that deeply interested in Joey Graceffa the way that they were with Shane Dawson. It's not like he's doing that many hard-hitting videos and stuff like that. Other than that, Joey Graceffa, Joey Graceffa my perception of him is... I think he cares a lot about animals, um, and I think that's great. I mean, I don't really know what else to say. I don't, I don't spend my days thinking about Joey Graceffa unless somebody sends things to me. Um, and, I, and, you know, I think the thing about Daniel Prada is this for me, is that Daniel Prada is somebody that when I first started watching him, like, I really liked Daniel Prada. I really liked him. I thought... Okay, here is a guy that has a lot of similar interests as me and thinks the same way as things as me. And then, like, I would see him and he would just say the most cutting, sassy shit. It wasn't sarcastic. It wasn't funny. It was mean. It was mean girl mentality, the stuff that he would say online, right? And then double down and stand on top of it. And then when he got called out on shit, it was like, oh, no, 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 like, girly girl. And I was like, see, this is, a, you are the epitome of somebody that, like, you can dish it out, but you cannot take it whatsoever. And I was like, that was it for me, right? So arrogant. I mean, just me sitting there thinking when he's in that video and he's like, um, Connor Franta. And I'm just like, this is literally the epitome of who you are. You know, I, I think it's a real lesson when you think you're bigger than you actually are that maybe you need to check yourself and right size yourself. In recovery, we talk about that all the time, that you need to be right size. That's called humility, okay? I think Daniel Preda is somebody that has very little humility. I don't really respect him much at all. And it's so funny because when I first started watching him, I really enjoyed Daniel Preda. But over time, and I mean, and a lot of people that I know feel the same way that don't ever talk about him or cover him. They're like, those tweets, that he, I mean, he used to put out nasty tweets, you guys nasty tweets online, you know? And he would put out, this, say this about this person and this about that person. He was always shading somebody, you know? And then I started reading the comments. He's coming, like, just the other day, somebody sent me this thing about he's coming for somebody in the comment section. But like, you don't have to watch my videos. I mean, if you're talking to people that way, why are you? I don't know. It's just a lot for me. And I'm not talking about once here and there because whatever, but, like, over something like a plant in a video. I mean, girl, come on. And I think the thing is, is that I really went into it wanting to like Daniel Prada. I mean, I tried really hard and I was just like, he, I, I just, I don't, maybe he has a lot of redeemable qualities to people in his life. He seems like he's a great son to his mom. I mean, everything on the surface level seems like Daniel Prada would be the person that I would want to be friends with. And I think that's the hard thing for me is always being seen behind the veil of eyes with these people. And then it's like, I catch a comment here or a response here or just a nasty, sassy tweet or this arrogance and this ego and how he talks about people and protects other people. And it just is like, to me, it's like, well, what you present and who you are are two different things. And apparently it's all about the money and all that kind of stuff. I wish him all the best, you know? I wish him all the best. So, I don't know. That's what I think about him. Uh, Timothy Chalamet. I don't really know anything about Timothy Chalamet. I don't even know that I've ever seen a movie with Timothy Chalamet in it, if you want to know the truth. Um, Charles Gross. Somebody said, found him on TikTok and didn't know anything about his YouTube career. Charles Gross. Okay, so... We had a huge falling out, and then we had a huge making up, and then we just were fine. It's just a civil relationship. I haven't talked to Charles Gross in years. Charles is the one that sent me the voice notes from Shane Dawson. It was a conversation that Shane Dawson had had. He sent uh, Charles Gross the voice note. Charles felt like after Shane Dawson's cancellation that I had a right to hear what Shane Dawson said about me at the time, so he sent it to me. Um, really, to be honest with you, one of the reasons why I have never played that voice note is not out of respect for Shane Dawson. It's out of respect for Charles Gross, okay? That's really why. Charles Gross, when I first started on YouTube, um, we had a falling out because somebody else got involved and was kind of whispering in his ear. I wish that person the best, too. I don't know wh even what, where they're at today. I don't really keep up with Charles at all. 
But Charles and I talked a lot when I first started on YouTube, and he was super, super helpful for me. Um, you know, the thing is that I noticed is that Charles would say things to me about that, like his way of looking at developing a career on YouTube was so smart. And the way that he interacted with his audience and things like that was so smart. You know, and he would say things like, don't ever argue with your audience in the comment section. And he was like, if you have something to say, say it in video. And he was so thorough in how he thought through these things. And then I noticed that he started doing it. And I was like, uh oh, like this is like, this is trouble, right? And then he left YouTube and now he has a very successful career on TikTok and he reviews all these things and he has this like cat. What's his catchphrase? Like, like, let's talk about this. Or, I love, I love his TikToks. I don't watch him very often, but I'm so happy for him, you know. And and um, and I'm I'm very grateful for Charles Gross. He he really helped me at the very beginning when nobody would really help me, you know, and nobody would really talk to me. And and Charles was really helpful to me, and he really inspired and motivated me because YouTube was something for him that just kind of fell into his lap like it did for me. And I think we both shared that and understood that. I remember talking to him on Christmas Eve when he was getting ready to go to Christmas. Christmas mass and I can remember him telling me stories about his family and Charles Gross is so much more than what you see on camera and he is really an um, a very beautiful enigmatic soul and I think he got lost a little bit along the way but I think he found himself again and I'm very happy for him and he really really helped me a lot back in the day and I'm and Charles if you're watching this which I'm sure you're not I know we haven't talked in years but I just want you to know I'm super grateful for all the help that you gave me at the beginning um, and I still think about a lot of the things that you told me and suggested to me back then so that's what I think of Charles Gross. I wish him all the best. Um, Chaperone, Celine Dion, love a few of her songs, don't really think much about her. Kim Zolciak, please don't come back to Atlanta. Apparently she's getting her own show now or something like that. Kim Zolciak is also one of my least favorite um, housewives ever, but I will tell you, the back and forth between her and Nene Leakes, especially on the reunions, go back and watch those videos. They are some of my all-time favorites. Anna Nicole Smith. I adore Anna Nicole Smith. I've watched everything about her. I've followed her career ever since back in the day. Um, it kind of made me sad when I watched the documentary and I realized how much she lied about her life back in the day, but I love Anna Nicole Smith. I think she is another lost soul that people you know, didn't really understand. I don't think she really understood herself and sadly was taken too soon, you know. Um, makes me really, really sad. Um, let's see who else. Demi Moore looks fantastic for her age. Don't really, I don't think much about I loved Demi Moore back in the day. Jules. In St. Elmo's Fire, are you kidding me? About last night, one of my all-time favorite movies of life. I loved Demi Moore back in the day. I don't really keep up with her much now. I've not watched the Life After Lockup Gypsy Rose documentary. Amphrodite, somebody asked me about. Amphrodite, um, you know, it's interesting. Amphrodite actually, like, reminds me a lot, like, our friendship kind of reminds me a lot of how Charles Gross and I were back in the day. Uh, Amphrodite is somebody that's been very helpful to me, too. Amphrodite, um, well, he's just a, such a kind soul. Can he find a man? Can somebody please find Amphrodite a boyfriend? I want a boyfriend for Amphrodite so bad. He wants one so bad, and I think he is so deserving of it. Amphrodite comes across online as very, like, sassy and, like, respond. And if you talk back to him, he's, like, you know, stands up for himself. And I live for that, right? But Amphrodite, like, offline is one of the most kind-hearted, sweetest guys I've ever met in my entire life. Genuine soul. Um, has given me a few readings, you know, uh, offline and given me some advice and some help and things like that. I love him. He's he's a great guy. I wish Amphrodite all the best. We text each other every once in a while. Um, and, you know, I just try to... He was going through something recently. I can't remember. And I texted him and I said, don't ever forget your value or your worth or something like that. I said, you're so much more than than what you see. And, and he and I have always been encouraging of each other in that way. And I'm grateful for Amphrodite. I think and his success. I'm grateful for him. He loves Trisha Paytas. This is where people think like, oh, you're so hate this, blah, blah, blah. You know, just because I don't agree with everything with Trisha Paytas doesn't mean I can't be happy for my friend that he got to go on her podcast. I was so excited for Amphrodite. He loves Trisha. I mean, like, that was such a moment for him, and I'm so excited for him. And he's had a lot of moments like that, and I think he has a lot of moments to come for that, you know? And I'm so, and Trisha was so kind to him, and, and you know, their interaction was fun. And, um, you know, and I, uh, and, and I appreciate that. He, you know, and we've had conversations in the past about Trisha and about other things, and he knows my take on her, and I don't dislike or hate Trisha, okay? And I want to make that very, very clear. Trisha was somebody that was very helpful and very kind to me at the beginning as well, and I'm grateful for that, right? I don't really hate her at all. It doesn't mean that if I, you know... I don't really hate anybody. I think that there's this idea that I hate people out there. I don't hate... And these are people that I talk about in videos, right? Um, this is going to stop again. Hold on. 
Oh my God, I can't believe this has gone an hour. But anyway, I don't really hate anybody, obviously, at all. But, um, you know, like, with Trisha, I can be happy for Amphrodite that it, he got that. And he's, like, so excited about it and stuff like that, you know? And, like, Trisha's another one. Like, you know, Trisha is, you know, just had her second baby. Congratulations to Trisha, Trisha and Moses on that. I feel like Trisha's grown up a lot. I still think she engages time to time in some BS. But don't we all? I wish her the best, you know? I want growth and change for all these people, including myself, right? Because the more we change and grow, and the more we're grateful for things, and we become a more focused, kind, centered people, the, the more we appreciate and enjoy the world, you know? Okay, let me pick one more. Oh, my husband just texted me. Done. Should be home in 18 minutes. Okay, let me pick one more. Um, people are asking me about a lot of the royal family. Um, uh, somebody said, where do you stand these days on Nikki Tutorials, my good sir? Somebody said. So it was interesting because I was talking about Nikki Tutorials in my video that I did a couple days ago. I noticed because I love drag pageantry and I followed all the pageants for years and years and years. In fact, I just talked about this the other day. And so I noticed that Nikki Tutorials was a, ju a judge for the Miss Northern something. I think it's a, um, a pageant in Denmark or something like that. I don't know where. And um, it's part of the Continental Pageant system. And I was like, this is really strange. Like, it was like former winners. It was like the current Miss Continental were judges and things like that. But I was like, this is kind of a strange choice, right? But I was so happy for her. And I thought, oh, this is really interesting. Nikki Tutorials is somebody that has really stayed so far out of... Um, out of controversy and drama, and I think she's done a really, really good job at that through the years. It was interesting that you asked this because I got this comment on my video. Let me see if I can find it. Maybe I didn't screenshot it, but I think I did. I got this comment on my video from somebody. No, I don't think I did save it. And um, here's actually the picture that I saved in the tutorials as a jury member for the pageant was called Queen of the North Continental. Um, but somebody said, I have always loved Nikki Tutorials, and I think she has done so much with her career and everything that she's gone through and all the adversity she's faced, you know, and being blackmailed and things like that. And I feel horribly for Nikki Tutorials. But this person went on to say, but I don't know what I think about her standing by certain people like James Charles. And that's the conversation, right? Like, and this person even said, I feel like that's a conversation that needs to be had. I do think it's a conversation that needs to be had. Um, you know, I will say this. Nikki Tutorials is somebody that I really respect. Highly, I think she's made good choices in her career. I think she has done a very good job of staying out of drama. The, the choice to align with James Charles, I would love to sit down with her and have her explain to me or to anybody um, why she makes that choice. What does she know about James Charles? What does she see in him that maybe the rest of us that take issue with James Charles don't see? You know, help me see him in a different light. You know, has he, to his friends behind the scenes, sang a different tune, taken some accountability, said he feels really bad for those things? If that's the case, then I can understand why some of these people would continue to hang around him, you know? If that's not the case, then why are you continuing to choose to hang around him? What is it you see in this person? And, like, she doesn't owe us any of that. I'd just be interested in knowing that, right? Because I think she is somebody that thinks through things. I think she's wise. I think she's smart. I'd like to know why she continues to hang so closely to a friendship like that. Like, unless she sees something different in him. Like, I would like to know what it is she sees in him that we don't see, you know? You know, when I talked to Manny years ago, and he said, if you knew James like I did behind the scenes, you would know he's not like that. And I said, well, Manny, there's literally ever evidence out there of what he has said to these people. And yeah, whatever. But, like, he didn't really go on and explain it. Like, he didn't say, like, but James takes accountability for that to me as a friend. He didn't say any of that kind of stuff. Like, if he had, maybe I'd look at that differently. So I'd like to know, like, from the people that stay closest to him or the people that stay close to Colleen and things like that, like have they said things to you? Like, have you had the conversations with them? Because I can tell you, like, any time anybody asks me about drama channels, and I got asked a lot of questions about a lot of different drama channels in this, right? Um, I'm at a point where I'm not really willing to come out and speak about my uh, drama colleague channels anymore. Um, I did that in the past, and I'm not willing to do that anymore. Um, there have been a lot of them out there that have been really, really supportive through to me through my accident, through my pancreatitis, that have helped me, have been super supportive of me, have been super supportive of family issues, medical issues that I've gone through. 
and issues like helping my husband with things, reaching out to my husband, reaching out to my best friend at times that like after the accident and things like that, um, that like I said, I um, judge people based on how they treat me and where they're at in their lives. And um, I'm, that's not a, a situation that I'm willing to, you know, uh, talk about those people in that way anymore. And I think, like, if none of these people feel like they need to come out and talk about why they align with any of these people, then I think that those questions should, shouldn't be asked of us either. And that's kind of where I'm at with it. And that might not be a really popular attitude, and that's okay. Um, I will say this, um, and it's probably more than any of these people have ever said about James Charles or Colleen Ballinger or anybody else, and none of these people are even in that realm of any of my colleagues who have really, really been there for me and supported me, and we have been through hell and back and made amends to each other and apologized and are friends today. And I can say that, not just friendly, we're friends, is that we don't condone everything that each other does. I don't condone what they do, and they oftentimes don't condone things that I do. But I can tell you that there are always always conversations that occur where we pick up the phone girl did you really just do this girl did you just say this girl did you tweet this out why did you have this stance i cannot stand behind this please don't ask me to address this please this. i mean we have had many many hundreds of conversations through the years as a drama channel community okay on holding each of us accountable behind the scenes I can only hope that the beauty influencers have done the same. And so that when Manny says to me, if you knew James Charles behind the scenes, I can only hope that the way that the drama commentary channels have held each other accountable behind the scenes, because if you remember years ago, when we would bicker and fight online, people would say, take this offline and settle it behind the scenes. And that's what we've done. So behind the scenes now, we hold each other accountable. We say things like, this was not correct, what you said. This was not right. You need to correct this, okay? On and on and on. We have had all those conversations about everything that anybody has ever brought up. Trust me, okay? There's a lot of shit that I don't condone and stand up behind. There's a lot of shit in, that other drama channels don't condone with me or other drama channels that have gone on in the last eight years that we've been online, all right? But behind the scenes, we hold each other accountable and we have those conversations because we love each other and that's growth, okay? That's companionship. When you care about somebody, those are the conversations you have. I'm not asking these people to blast each other online, but I hope behind the scenes that they're holding each other accountable. I hope when Manny says to me on the phone, if you knew James behind the scenes, you would know that he's not that person. I hope he knows that because he's had a sit down conversation with James where James has explained those things to him. Because I can tell you with us drama channels, we've had those conversations. We've held each other accountable. We've asked, we've asked each other about things. Eight years ago, seven years ago, six years ago, five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, a year ago, six months ago, a month ago, last week. We've had those conversations. Now, I've got a bunch more names on this list. So if you want me to do a part two, I will absolutely do a part two. Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to wish my husband a happy birthday today. I love you guys so much. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.